evening guys i've thanks for the few people have subscribed here in the last few days or so and apologize to man i've had so much going on i realize the channel's called larry does stuff but by the time i get so busy i realize there's some stuff i probably should have filmed something else i wanted to see or learn from uh, but today i'm actually getting a little bit of time finally uh, to work on some mounts here on the kx71 for my hydraulic hoses and a diverter here in the front so i'm going to give you an overview of that and we'll look around at everything with it all right, so this has been something I've been wanting to do for very long. And matter of fact, I've had a couple of these parts in for a very long time. I just haven't had either the Traco here at the shop or weather's been bad or I've been busy with other things. But here's basically the deal. Uh, you'll see two mounts right here and here, uh, two bolts in each one of these. That is what this system was bolted to before. This is the tube. So it actually is a metal tube where the hydraulic hose from the top here hooks hooked to it and then it continued down branch down through here and extend that so one of the things that uh you'll notice with this these brackets are actually really good and heavy duty thick uh good size and everything but uh this is one that this is not a Kubota part if <laughs> it is a larry does stuff part this is actually the uh a part of the swing actually i'm gonna look over there towards the dump trailer actually it is one of the hinges for the back of that dump trailer i got when i had to order some when i bent one of them and uh what it is just welded on that to this mounting bracket the same thing as that and what this did when it's mounted on here this just became more like a a management mount where i could just slide a pin in and out and manage some hoses and kind of keep them in there loose and slid it actually worked quite well but here's the stage that we're at i finally got this uh this diverter so we got supply and i've got the thumb hookup that's going back to my thumb that'll stay all the time just about on uh, and then i can switch over to whatever i'm putting on the uh, quick connect hydraulics here so one of the options i had and if you're thinking through something like this I was going to leave the tube on the arm and extend maybe this diverter down here lower because well the tube's there but actually i really didn't like getting the diverter down here lower sometimes when i'm mowing doing some other work that's really down a little bit more in the work area and i just thought it was more potential damage so what i've come up with is it's going to get mounted just about right here uh i've got some plates I'm going to walk over and show those plates to you real quick, and then I'm going to get to mounting this thing. I'm right, over here at the plates, and uh, this is, again, this is not a part thing. This is two pieces of metal, been drilled. Uh, these two bottom holes bigger will be for the uh, mount that you just saw. Those are the holes for that. And these two top mounts are for the Summit hydraulic diverter. And the reason that this is offset is I wanted the... Uh, middle of the hoses uh, the center between two different hoses to be a bolt hole here so if this ever did come loose i wouldn't have to move all the hoses out of the way to tighten up this bolt but it also positions it right now here's the key i'm going to say obviously i've got the old kubota paint can um, but i can tell you why i chose this thickness of metal and this particular size because that is the piece of metal i had <laughs> <laughs> so that's just what I rolled with. I had some metal that was actually much thicker and it was just a little bit too much and some other stuff was too thin, too bendable. But I do want, when I mount things, I really want to look sometimes at actually not just being sturdy and beefy, but I want things to possibly give. So if I do get caught on something, I would rather this mount plate give a little bit than that more expensive diverter valve. So this was one piece of metal. I just cut it in half half with the uh, chop saw and then I stacked them uh, marked my holes uh, with those use a piece of paper punch the holes through with a pencil uh, stacked them together and drilled each hole at the same time rechecked it and then uh, marked the other two holes and marked that then put it on the grinder it was rust I mean you'll see some pit on these but I really don't care it's just to hold it there I don't even care if it starts to rust I could do this again uh, the other thing I was going to do to this is uh, probably later on is make some type of a handle, some type of a diverter to protect that diverter valve a little bit. But 
ah, not a big deal right now. I got to move on to some other things. So I'm going to take a pause and mount this on here and see how it actually works. All right, everything is bolting on fine. Just a couple of notes for fitment on this. The depth of the bolts that came with the mounts is for a much thicker piece of metal or a good bit thicker. So I've had to put some washers in behind there to give it some spacing so that this bolt doesn't bottom out. Uh, so just a little bit of spacing there, but everything is actually pretty solid on that. The other thing for some washers um, we we'll have to do is if you'll notice on the back, you have this back of the valve that sticks out just a little bit. So if you go to, uh, I bet you that's blurry. I'm trying to get it back where it can focus. Sorry about that. Uh, but that sticks out a little bit. So otherwise you're going to be really compressing it against there and then bending this piece of metal out. So what I've done is just put some uh, stick four washers there, the thin ones on each side. If I'd have known that, thought about that ahead of time, I could have just got some nylon bushings just for spacers or something. But all right, I just wanted to see that before I bolted in. All right, she's on. I'll do a couple tests here in a minute. Uh, it's possible I may have should put this up even a little bit higher. Um, we'll see how this does when I do the full bend. But this is about the mid, the mid stretch point with the arm. Uh, when the arm goes out, you'll end up seeing a bow in the top of this hydraulic hose. And when it curls, it's got a shorter reach back to itself. So I'll just test that to make sure it's okay. I don't want anything straining. Uh, but basically, what's going to work now is this, even with this actually against the metal, with that spacer kind of in there, it's touching the metal plate. But boy, it moves good and it does, it's not like wiggling, it's gonna take some even beyond vibration to do something. But in this position, it's running this hose for my thumb. If I wanna run, say right now I have a tilt bucket on here, uh, I'll just move it to the front and it's gonna be flowing through here and down this side uh, for the mower. Uh, this one is rated up to 20 gallons per minute. And that really is the top of what the auxiliary flow is on this KX71. So it should be fine, but it's like anything else. You add, you know, every junction, every tube, length of tube, every connection somewhere down through the system, and you're gonna find that you lose some force and flow in GPM, just like a fire hose, garden hose, or anything else. But hopefully this still is gonna be, should be good for the, the mower and everything else. But I hope that gave somebody an idea. Again, here's a little bit of before, just the two holes there and a little bit of after. I think it's worked out okay. Uh, I can wiggle on this and you see some movement, but again, I'm okay with that because I would rather this plate bend and torque out than something more expensive taking the force. So I hope that helps somebody with some ideas. Uh, there's gonna be more rigging, man. That's a fun stuff of uh, dealing with all this stuff and hopefully making better work and more efficient work. But y'all have a blessed day. See you soon.